In this video, I'm going to introduce the group by clause in SQL uh, through the Excel pivot table. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use this query uh, or the, the, the records that underlie this query, uh, transfer them over to Excel, uh, run a pivot table, and then perform essentially the same aggregation, aggregation as, uh, as present in this query. So I already have this uh, copied and pasted, this query uh, in SQL Server Management Studio, so I'm going to jump over there. Um, again, uh, if you saw my prior video on, on just the concept of the group by, we ran this query, kind of talked through the output that we're seeing here, uh, right? The number of records uh, for the field Anna Cortez uh, for the for the field city with a value of Anna Cortez. Uh, there are three records. Where also, and this isn't displayed, where also the state province ID is equal to 79. Um, so this is. Uh, aggregated output. So what we're going to do is remove the group by clause. Uh, we're going to remove the select list and just select all fields, uh, all records, all fields that meet this criteria. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the table subset that, that the aggregation uh, function is performed on and then ultimately the grouping as well. And I'm going to order the output by city. It doesn't really matter for, for our purposes, um, but I'm going to execute that. There are 2,636 records that meet this criteria. And so if I, uh, just to show you how to get this data out of a, uh, out of SQL Server Management Studio, I tend to select in the output window, control A, right click, uh, copy with headers. Um, I'm not sure that that's the default. I don't think it is. Um, at any rate, you can change that with your uh, with your options, with your preferences. Uh, so that's my default method. I'm copying with headers. I come over to Excel, go to A1, for example, and just paste it all in there. And you can see we have all the data. Um, there will be 2,636 uh, records, right? See that through the count there. Um, some some uh, by default, like the time stamps uh, from SQL don't necessarily display accurately. Um, so you can see uh, we can always, always reformat that uh, so that we can see it as a date, right? Um, so a short date here. Um, so we ultimately have all of our data uh, that underlies that, that query, uh, that aggregation query that we've been sharing through the lectures. And so what I'm going to do is um, I, this really isn't covering the pivot table itself. Uh, but really meant to show for those who are familiar with the pivot table, uh, how does how does this work uh, in SQL and, and basically showing the comparisons uh, so that conceptually you can kind of make the connection of what SQL is doing uh, when you write out you know your 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 query with with an aggregation function and grouping. Uh, so the steps to insert a, a pivot table, you go to the insert uh, tab on the ribbon. Uh, you insert the pivot table here. Um, it automatically, if your, your cursor is, or cell is selected within the data, it ultimately selects all that data. Um, it outputs it to a new worksheet by default. I'm just going to leave the defaults as is. And then we're presented with the pivot table, kind of uh, the, the fields, uh, items, and, and sort of things that we can select here. So I'm trying to pull this open a little bit more. And so we have various fields, right? And uh, Again, I'm not going to cover everything, but we, what we want is really we want values for the city field for sure. And so right now we're displaying that in the row. Uh, you can see that Excel by default um, in a pivot table kind of displays the unique values. So this already matches uh, the the um, the output that we saw uh, in uh, in the group by function. So when we actually group these records, um, we do see. Uh, unique values uh, for the field city, ultimately ordered by those values as well. Um, I don't think that's by default how uh, pivot table would work. We'd probably have to sort A to Z, but because I output the data already sorted, Excel is showing it in a, a sorted, uh, uh, sorted as well. So for example, the first four values, Anna Cortez, Ballard, Bellevue, Bellingham, uh, those are also going to be the first four values in the SQL output. Um, what we ultimately need to add are the count of rows or records for each value of the field city. Um, and so when you're looking at that, uh, there isn't, a, you know, a, an obvious way to do it in Excel. Uh, but if I did something like address ID, it doesn't matter what field. And this is kind of true of SQL as well. I know I did count star, but you could ultimately put any field in the count 
and the count function, and it's going to return the same result uh, because we are looking at a count. We're not actually using the values in that field. Um, and so the default is sum of address ID, which as we know, that address ID is the primary key. It, it doesn't make any sense to sum those values. What we want instead by uh, using the value field settings is to go to count. And so we're going to count the number of records. And then we can see uh, that our count uh, of records, and I'm going to try to put these side by side quickly. Um, we can ultimately see that the, that the output from Excel, I can blow this up a little bit, matches the output from SQL, right? So we have each value of city. Ultimately, I know the, the order is a little bit different, um, and we could actually change that quite easily in Excel by order, or sorry, in SQL by changing uh, the order of our selected list, which determines ultimately the order of the output. So let me just execute this. And we can see that we essentially have uh, the same exact output um, and that everything, um, you know, all the values equal or equivalent. So this is essentially the equivalent function uh, or the equivalent query, uh, sorry, uh, that it would generate the same sort of output from, a, from an Excel pivot table. So this is, you know, the, the group by clause aggregations uh, in SQL is, is definitely has a direct analog with the Excel pivot table. And then ultimately we can see, I think Excel will, will, will spit out the grand total. That's one thing that SQL will not do, right? Um, but the grand total there is 2,636 records, which we did see when we just pulled all the, the records for the field, uh, or I'm sorry, all records for this table that satisfied this, this particular criteria. And so that's really that's really it for this video. It's just meant to, to introduce the group by clause with something that maybe you're familiar with already. Um, and uh, I hope you found I hope you found this 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 video um, this video useful.